So I just wanted to uh, let you in on a project I'm doing. Uh, I found out I can build a CNC machine out of old floppy drive parts and CD-ROM parts. So I get uh, plenty of CD-ROMs around. And I have two old computers I can rip the uh, floppy drives out of. And I'll worry about finding a third one later. But uh, let's get started. <laughs> All right, guys. So here we are with our CD-ROM drives. We got uh, three of them. They're different sizes. Uh, start. Uh, Disassembling them. I took these out of old compacts. I used to work on them. Is this coming out? Yes, coming out. Okay. So I got uh, I got two DVD readers and one uh, CD burner. It doesn't do DVDs. But that is a okay. I have a whole bunch of spare optical drives. Fortunately, big screwdriver. There's too big for these little tiny screws. I'm hoping I don't have too many small ones left. Is doing it by hand with this old knife is really a pain in the butt. I'm going to do it by hand no matter what. Yeah, see? And that's why I still think he's folding up. Come on, it's right at the end. And I'm also going to be saving the shell of these, so I can use them as the base for the whole CNC machine. And uh, right now I'm also using them as my microphone stand for my gameplay on The uh, Walking Dead. Alright, so let's get rid of this sticker here. This pop off all the plastic in the front. And that's not going to be that easy. Right. Oh, sorry. Okay. So here we go. We got these ones out. Okay. Now, let me see if this is going to be a usable board. Because from what I read, there should be a connector here with four pins, and I'm not seeing it. It uh, should be. Let's see, this one here spins the CD. So maybe it's underneath that guy. Alright, so what do we have here? Oh, it's all just. Yeah, right, just move this. These move up like that. Perfect. Alright. Close that down. Get this guy. I'm going to be careful I'm not to do anything to the board. So I may want to use this later. Oh, I see. This side's easier. Alright, so I'm going to pop open this guy carefully. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we can get this here. Alright, so you can see right there, there's an itty bitty connector with the four pin. Four more wire. There we go. And that is it right there. That's what I'm looking for. This little uh, connector there. It's got four wires that go to the stepper motor. So all of this is uh, a nice interface board, but I do not need it. I'm going to carefully take that apart. I'm going to take this guy apart. See if I can take the board out all in one piece. Oh, yeah, there's a little screw right there. Or it'll come out one piece if I smash it. Yeah. It's 
kind of weird how they have these two ribbon cables in the, in the sockets there, the little, you know, ZIF sockets. And then this one here, they run it and then they solder it directly to the board. It's just weird. Let's see, let's just see. Short loader. Huh, I don't know what that means. Easy, easy. Alright. Well, I know this I can pop out. I can find a paper clip. Which I do not have. Okay, that's fine. There's also a release thing here, so let's see if we can take a look inside, see what's catching on. Must be a little motor connector right here. Oh, these are the buttons. Okay, I see. So the hole for the pin actually goes in right underneath here. Let's see if I can pull this guy up and out carefully. There we go. Carefully work it out. So let's unplug this little connector. Pair of needless pliers I can use. Hey, look at that instant. Okay. So there is our logic boards. Now this I might be able to use because let's see here. We have this guy here. Oh that's interesting. There's some kind of switch limit switch there. You get volume here. Or some kind of Oh, so I'm like, what is that? Ah, got a variable resistor. You got the, uh, your busy light. And here it looks like headphone jacks. And you got a play and eject button. Ah, I could definitely use some of these components. All right, so let's put this to the side. All right, and let's see what we need here. So we need to get that out. Let's see, there's so many screws. I can see a bunch of screws here in the motor connector. I want to try to get down there, inside there first. Let's see here. Right there's the, where you stick the pin in to release it. So it's right underneath here. It should be that. And there we go. Oh, look at that. There's a CD-ROM in there. I'll have to check that out later. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Automatically went right back in. That's pretty cool. Alright, so let's see if we can get this off now. There we go. 
All right, so that guy's off. All right. Now with that part missing, let's see what else we can do. I guess the next step, uh, let's try to get this piece out of the plastic. I don't see any major, any major holding it back. Yep, there we go. Now it's starting to come out. an interesting one. So you have these two tabs on either side that bend over and hold the rear part in. I don't see any extra screw holes that I'm missing. Uh, it would be nice to get into the top somehow, but it's not necessary. Well, at this point, there is no easy way to take it apart, so it looks like we're just going to have to brute force it. There we go. Just a little bit of brute force and just pop right out. Alright, so here we have this. Here we have these two little tabs I can squeeze, which will allow me to overextend this. There we go. There's our CD-ROM drive. This here's our mechanism that catches and allows it to read. Those are all going to leave in there. I'm gonna use uh, screwdriver tape leading these bad boys out. Well, there's some heavy duty screws. All right. So I'll, I'll look into that motor to maybe do something later with it. Nice little, oops, sorry about that. Nice little servo motor. All right. Now, here we have this main motor. And I'm going to use my small screwdriver. Disconnect this guy. Now I'm contemplating. I have two options on what to use as a routing head. I can either use a Dremel and attach that to one of the bits, or I can use a DVD motor because they can spin quite fast. The only thing is, I'm not exactly sure how I would be able to control the speed. I guess I'll have to figure that part out when we get there. So what I'm doing now is just trying to take these three screws off. It'll allow me to take off the motor that actually spins the, the DVDs. It feels pretty loose. Okay. So there we go. I get this 
stay out. Got these uh, heavy duty springs to help stop vibration. And this here, the motor loose. That's some resistance to it. Oh, I can hear the bearings inside. That's probably not good. Huh. Yeah, that's that's it. You can see it's got a couple connections. One, two. Let's just get three different windings. Interesting. So this here is basically our CNC machine here. This is the uh, the laser diode that reads. And this will give you this much travel. All right. So let's uh, see if we can take apart this. Take off this guy and uh, see if we can save the rest. All right, guys, so as you can see, I did uh, time-ups with the last two drives. So I got all three uh, CD drives here ripped apart. Again, two of them were DVD, and one of them was um, a CD with burner. And I'm, I believe this one here is the, the CD one. So if you actually look at the spindle here, you can see the, uh, the pitch that goes up and down on. And both these two here have a much tighter one. So I want to use these two for the, the base of the, uh, the CNC machine for the X and Y axis. Since it has a bigger pitch, it's, uh, you can get uh, a lot better resolution. So it'll be much finer detail. And this, I basically just need to go just up, just up and down so I can uh, have the Dremel hit the surface of what I'm drilling. So, uh, yep, that's it. We've got all three of these rip apart. I'm going to rip apart the, uh, these little grommets here in this last one. And uh, that's it. I think I'm going to leave the lasers in each one because if I take them apart, then, like, here, I'll show you. If I, if I go to take the, uh, the laser part out of this one, I'd have to remove this screw here, which is a tensioner on the, uh, on the track system. So I'm just going to leave that all intact. Uh, what I need to do now is I'm probably going to use this one as a base because it's very beefy. And this one's lighter in comparison, I guess. Oh, well, this one's lighter. Maybe I'll just weigh it up and figure it out. But uh, I'm going to have one of these as a base. And I'll have the other one here. And as, I, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of travel here. So then you add this on top of it and just slide, which will slide up and down with it. And then you'll get the horizontal axis to go. And that'll be it. So right now, I'm just going to take a break. And uh, when we come back, we will take apart the floppy drives. And we will then make a hybrid drive to do the CNC machine. I took apart my donor computer, uh, one that was given many years ago. And uh, never got around to fixing. And then the people that gave it to me, they broke up. So, uh, they don't no longer need that. Yeah, I was just uh, given to it basically as a parts computer anyways. But, uh, so I went through with an old Dell. I took apart everything that I could. I got the, the shell. Unfortunately, he, the guy that had it before me, he was a heavy smoker. So I, went, I salvaged the uh, power supply unit. This side's not too bad, but I mean, you can see all the smoke. It looks like a fur coat on it. So I'm going to have to take apart that thing, blow all the uh, the dust out of it, or let's pull all the smoke out of it. And I got some other uh, parts that I might be able to use for other projects. I got uh, this really huge, uh, I think it's 120 millimeter. Anyways, this large uh, rear case fan. And it's got this cool little hood on it. I originally thought it was for a penny of three, because usually you see the bigger ones like that. But it's... Uh, I actually had an Intel Celeron in the, in the board, 
And I grabbed stuff like the, uh, you know, the ribbon cable. Stuff like that. Okay, that's an Atari cable, so that wasn't inside of it. I grabbed uh, this here. Just a little connector for all the, the power button and the hard drive LEDs. And uh, it's got a nice twisted cable. And in this one, what is it? Uh, four, five, six. This one's got six. It's got a little brown short jump in there. But I can use this one as the main wire for the X and Y axis. And I got a floppy drive cable. I can take something out of that. I hacked up, hacked this out of the board. This is the, uh, this was the USB cable. And I'm definitely going to keep this one because there's actually nine connectors in it, or nine wires. So that will give me all three of my axes. So I can use this to interface the board I'm going to be combining to the uh, printer port. And uh, here's some wire that I got out of the uh, the Dell that was donated. Uh, this here is a... Uh, we got... Oh, it's just one single wire. Okay. So you got six wires on this one. So this will be good for like the X and Y axis. I also picked up this really... Oh, this thing's heavy. I've seen this, this huge heat sink. I've never seen a heat sink this big before. I picked that up off the processor. It was an Intel Celeron. Uh, 2.6... Gigahertz, all right, gigahertz. I don't know. 2.6. And I got the uh, the first one. Here's a good idea of how how heavy the smoke is in this thing. The guy that had it before me smoked for years and years and never bothered cleaning it. When I actually opened it up, there were cut, there were huge spider webs in there. So not only did he smoke, but he never moved it in a long time, and spiders made a home into it. So I'm gonna rip this guy apart in just a little bit. I got a, uh, I was going to chuck it, but I got a 40 gig hard drive. So that should be plenty big for making a, uh, a small Linux machine to run the CNC mill once it's all set up. So I'll stick that off to the side here. I got uh, two more CD-ROM drives. This one here is a DVD drive. And the one below it, that uh, was just a regular... CDRW drive by Sony. The other one is data storage. So I got uh, two new drives, so that replaced the. Uh, I destroyed three drives making this, so I got two drives out of it, so it's not too bad. So I got one drive down. Okay, I'm back. Uh, for some reason, my phone is giving me a thing about file sizes for videos. I've gone on and on for hours before and never had this issue. But anyway, so here's my, my tester. Like I said, you can plug in the uh, the main part that you plug into the board on that side. It's better lighting. On that side. And on this side, you got your uh, your hard drive connection, P4 connector. This is for your floppy drive. So I can just plug it in, and uh, with the LEDs, it tells me all the individual voltages to make sure everything is correct. So I'll... Plug the uh, power supply in and test that out. But uh, as of right now, I took uh, my my uh, my ba my baby right here. This is my XP computer. Uh, this is what I use to capture all of my Atari Let's Plays. Okay, sorry about that. So I got another file size limit. Apparently, my hard drive is not hard drive, but the internal storage space is full on my phone. But thankfully, I uploaded my Let's Play today. For The Walking Dead, uh, Season 1, Part 1. And so I just deleted that and got 4 gigs. So now I should be able to splice all these into one coherent video. And as I was saying, I'm going to, uh, at least with the, the the floppy drive out of my XP machine that I record my Atari Let's Plays on, and the one I yanked out of the Dell right now, uh, it should give me the two axes to do the base of it anyways. The third one, I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to hook up, because uh, it only needs to go up and down just a very little bit. So I may not even use uh, CD-ROM parts. I may save that one for later. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to use for a spindle. Um, what I really want to do is uh, take one of these motors. These are the, uh, the motors that actually spin your CD or DVD in the unit. And i got uh, three of these guys. I got the two, two for DVDs. This one sounds horrible. I got some loose bearings or something. 
Yeah, this one's the same way. So these two must be the must have been the DVD drives or something. But uh, I know these things can spin up some incredible speeds. Yeah, you thirty know, x write and read and whatnot. But if I uh, I'll do the math and figure out exactly what the RPMs are of them. And uh, if I can, I'm going to modify those things in order to use that as a spindle because they're nice and lightweight. And then that way I can just plug in like a Dremel bit into it. And if that won't work, I do have a, um, a battery-operated Dremel. It's a rechargeable battery. You just throw it in. So I should be able to just charge it, that up, charge it up that way. can't speak. And then should be able to uh, get a head going. So, but for, uh, for right now, I think that's it. So we're going to um, take a few minutes and rip apart these floppy drives and see what we can do. Completely killed the case on Quake there. All right, this is one. Of, this is the smoky floppy drive. Yeah. So I might as well do this one first. Uh, this one I'm going to need my little screwdriver for. You really should go and get another kit. It's been so long since I needed any tools that I lost them all, and you need to start all over. Okay. Nope. One down. I've got a, quite a pile of trash collecting. So now let's uh, get to the good one. So hopefully I, should, I can still use that board. So if you're thinking about doing this at home, remember be careful of your traces. All right. Do I see two screws on that side? Yeah, this side's all clear. Someone bent the hell out of the power nub on this. That's not good. This is actually the one out of my, my uh, Atari recorder. 
I'm just going to call it. All right, so there are my two boards. That's all scrap. I can use those stepper motors and pancake motors in another project. But uh, so here we are. So what we're going to do, we're going to hook up power, and then we're going to jump a couple of uh, things in here, and that will allow us to send power and signals to the stepper motor, as well as that guy there. The sensor and uh, this sensor with these since it's separate with these wires can make it a lot easier to extend. Whereas this guy here, he's actually board mounted, so I'm going to have to desolder this and put in a, uh, a whole new just added wires directly from here to where it needs to go. Interesting, it's just a big one sided board.
A lot of companies use two-sided. This is the same way, just one-sided. All the components and everything are on that one side. But yeah, that's the little guy that uh, that drives everything. So we'll uh, we'll do that up, and I'll try to figure out exactly where the uh, that trace is. I'll just follow this all the way back to whichever pin it is, and I'll just have to solder directly onto that. So hopefully it's not too bad. If I get lucky, it'll be right here. There's a small gap there that one pin's not being used. So if it's on one of those, it'll be perfect. Actually, I'm just going to follow it now. And let's see. Let's set the second one on. And I am lucky. It is right there on the edge. All right. So. We'll just uh, power this up and give it a shot later. And then we're going to go from there. We'll make a hybrid CD-ROM and uh, floppy drive. Hey guys, Ed here. So I just wanted to uh, give an update. Uh, over the weekend, we had the Pumpkin Fest here in Keene. Um, many of you have seen that it was quite a debacle. Uh, huge, huge mess. It was uh, very disgraceful what went down. But uh, riots and all kinds of stuff. But before that went down, luckily uh, my wife and I took the kids out to go and see all the pumpkins and everything, and we didn't realize that all this stuff started the night before. But thankfully, the police were able to keep it off of Main Street, so we weren't affected at all. And uh, while we were there, I was able to swing by and uh, chatted with a guy online who uh, was connected with the local Boy Scout troop, and he had a few, few extra parts. So I'm not sure what the true number it is. I'll put a link in the description or whatnot. But I just wanted to uh, thank the Boy Scouts for donating two, uh, well, new to me, disk drives. So that's the final one that I need. And I got a second one, which is great because I only thought I was going to get one of them. But I got the second one so I can replace the one that the, uh, the what do you call it, the trace on the board lifted off. So I'll save that board as a backup just in case something goes wrong. So now I have four disk drives. So I'm going to use three of them and three CD and DVD drives, and uh, we'll be good to go. So right now let's tear into these two new drives, take them apart, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so here's uh, one of the boards here, and let me just turn this around. So here's one of the boards that I picked up. Um, this right here is just the main driver board. Now both of these floppies had something interesting. Had these two contacts here, and judging by their position, uh, I'm not sure why it's completely upside down. I have to pull out an old floppy disk, but I know um, there's that little switch on there to, to make it right protected or not. So I assume that's what these are for their right protection switches. So I've got little push button momentary switches. So I've got two here and two on the secondary board. So I'm assuming these are made by the same manufacturer. They're very similar layouts. Um, right here's the connectors for the uh, where the head reads the, the, the disc. Um, this one, as you saw, I cut the uh, the wires and realized afterwards that this one, unlike the previous models, uh, both of these had external um, limit switches. You can see uh, right there, just that little guy. This one I kind of find interesting because not only is the limit switch on its own little PCB board, but it's also on this metal mount, which I have never seen before. So I can always just take that little hole there, drill it out bigger, put a regular size screw into it, like a one for uh, mounting a hard drive into the side or something, and just use that to stick it wherever I need to. So I'm going to have to get some wires and extend that. I was going to have to cut it and extend it anyways, but and I have this one here, which uh, I was able to pull out without cutting. This one's a four wire, the other's a three. But I'm assuming it's either the negative or the positive that's shared on them. I'd have to take a look at the board, but... Uh, both units have, you know, 
four pins, but this one has four separate wires. And uh, that's it. Very plain on that side. You get all your components on this side. This one, is it this one? No, it's the other one here. Let me pull this on. This one, as I was pulling it out, you see here it's got a couple extra uh, pieces, got a couple extra capacitors, and uh, I'm not sure what that blue thing is. I thought it was a capacitor, but I see three leads coming off of it. And judging by the print on the circuit board, it might be like a double capacitor. One input, two outputs. That's kind of interesting. Just a guess, but... Anyways, yeah, so... That one had a few extra parts coming out, and this one... Yeah, this one too. When I was pulling this one out. Uh, this is the one... Yeah, the, it was all the way around. This is the one where you saw me taking the, the pliers and prying back the metal. The uh, screws that held in the mo the pancake motor um, were extremely t tiny, and I could not get my little uh, jeweler screwdriver here. It's a very tiny bit, but it just still wasn't small enough to really grip it. So I tried using my needle nose pliers, and that didn't work. So I just had to go brute force and just rip it right out. Please excuse the cord. I'm trying to charge the uh, phone here while I video. But uh, yeah, so that's it. All right. Thanks for watching me uh, complete phase one of taking the drives apart there. Uh, we'll continue the um, project later on where we're going to combine the uh, floppy drives that we took apart to the CD drives that we took apart and create a hybrid system. And then with that, we should be able to wire it directly to a parallel port on a computer and that'll drive our CNC machine. And uh, so if you look forward to uh, watching the rest of the project, please like this video and click subscribe, and you won't miss a beat. And if you could check out my Facebook fan page, I'll put a link below in the description. And um, give me a shout out there. Give me some tips and uh, give me some ideas for future projects. All right. Well, feel free to leave any comments below. And um, thank you very, very much for watching.